everyone. This is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. Today we are going to talk about dragon energy. This is something that a lot of you ask me about. <clears throat> I've shared about it in some of my podcasts where I'm like, my dragon energy came out. Uh, so I got a couple of recent DMs on Instagram like asking, can you explain more what this means? Because I feel like I also have this dragon energy but sometimes I don't know how to use it in a positive way and I've used it and I felt like I actually created like negative karma because I was using it in a negative way. <clears throat> so what is dragon energy and how do we use it for something that's positive, um, something that's uplifting in our lives and for everyone around us? We're going to deep dive into this right now. So I invite you to get cozy in your body and take a deep breath with me through your stomach and all the way up to the top of your head. So breathe in. And just sigh. <sighs> when we sigh, we actually are activating our nervous system that we are in a state of safety because we only sigh when we are satisfied and feeling safe. So you can actually remind your body that you are safe by periodically throughout the day, whenever you remember, to take a deep breath and to sigh, to sigh whatever comes out. So take a deep breath. <sighs> you, can, you can put one hand on your stomach or one hand on your heart and just really connect back to your body and know that you are always guided and protected and loved by the universe. So what is dragon energy? I uh, Ferdy like kind of termed this <laughs> when he saw it come out of me. He actually has some psychedelics trips has like seen this dragon energy coming out of me and around me. And I've also connected to this like one time on a psychedelic trip, I like saw the energy around me as like this huge dragon that is like protective, but also can like fuck some shit up, you know, like if, if things are not going well. Um, and it's all for for the inner, protecting the inner little girl that's in me. I've also had some of you reach out and say that you have seen me in dreams with dragons, like two dragons on each side of me, one dragon on each side of me. And um, <clears throat> I secretly think that Afro is going to transform into a dragon one day because she is the nicest little alien. I call her my Afro bear because when her hair grows out, she looks like a bear. Uh, but when she is protecting me, uh, she goes crazy and her, her dragon energy comes out and it's like, whoa, where did that come from? Also, I would secretly just love to ride her around as the dragon version of her. Anyways, I'm going off track here, but dragon energy is when I, when I, st I started researching it and I, I looked it up like mythologically, it is the energy of wisdom. It is the energy of being able to see through and cut through whatever bullshit is going on in a situation, whatever stories are happening, and see what is really going on in a situation. So it is more it is more intuitive, it is more emotional, it is it is like spiritual. It's like your psychic abilities of like, oh, I see exactly what's happening and I can speak this. I can speak this out. Because when we speak truth it does cut like a sword. It cuts through whatever stories people are creating in their reality. And it's like, oh, this is what's really happening. So we can use it like a sword um, or we can use it in a positive way. For me, um, I also believe that it is our, like our inner wisdom. It's us connecting to our higher selves, our intuition. It's like this inner fire, you know? So like imagine the, the fire that comes out of the dragon. Um, so you can use this to warm things up or you can use this to burn things down. So many people are afraid of this inner power, this inner fire in themselves, especially women, because we are programmed to believe that we must be beautiful and quiet and subservient and just serve everyone around us. Um, and so when we touch this inner fire in us, it's like, oh, you know, we, we almost shame ourselves for having it and we're not able to channel it a lot of times in ways that are 
um, productive and beneficial for us and for everyone around us. It's like sometimes we get so triggered and that it just comes out, you know, and it's like this very, it's this very powerful energy that just like shoots out of us uh, to protect us. But is it actually like, you know, it's, I know that I have a lot of psychic abilities what's the point of having these if I'm not able to channel them in a way that's actually making my 3D reality better for myself and for the people around me? Because uh, otherwise it's called chaos magic. And this is something that you can research. Chaos magic is when you have all of this energy and you're able to move the elements around you energetically, emotionally, sometimes even physically, but you're not in control. And it's usually through your emotions. And that's why it's chaotic because it's very unstable energy. So when I think of like a balanced dragon energy, like an ener- balanced dragon energy that is like doing good in the world, I think of the scene in Game of Thrones. I read all of the Game of Thrones books and I love them. Um, I feel like this TV show really focused on the violent parts of it and the sex and the books are so much better and so much deeper. But anyways, we're going to cut to the scene in Game of Thrones where Daenerys is talking to some of the slave owners of these other cities that she wants to free the slaves, right? And the slave owner is like, yeah, I don't care what you want. Like, I'm not freeing my slaves. Uh, We can partner on ruling the slaves together, but I'm not freeing my slaves. And she just like calmly sits there and she's like, you're going to free your slaves and this is what's going to happen. And then she like has her drag, her dragons are sitting on each side of her, like kind of behind her, like literally having her back. And then she just like says like Dracarius, which is like the signal for them to catch something on fire. And they like catch something on fire next to the guy to show him, look, this is what we can do. And then she's like, I'm giving you this warning that if you do not free your slaves, then this is going to be you next. Like you're going to be the next thing I catch on fire. And he's like, oh my God, (laughs) you know? Yeah. So she showed her power in a way that was also channeled to empower others. So she used her energy to warn the the boundaries of what she was wanting to do and who she was, and also to speak for the empowerment of the people uh, that she was trying to, to free. And so I also believe that our, our dragon energy can be used. Each of us have an inner masculine and inner feminine in us. And we know that the inner masculine of everyone is very much dominating the world like the masculine energy is dominating the world so if you come in in a feminine body like a female body a lot of times we are scared to use our masculine energy because we're worried that it's going to become what we call toxic masculinity which is like using this energy in a negative way using dragon energy in a negative way if we use it in a positive way like our inner masculine is actually supposed to have this like this is the boundaries of who i am and what is safe for me to work in and no one crosses my boundaries so it's kind of like like they have this term um called righteous anger where it's like i set my boundary of like basically you do not touch like literally a boundary could be you do not touch my body without my permission And if someone crosses that boundary and touches your body without your permission, your dragon energy can come out and say, hey, stop. So this is a proper use of our dragon energy coming out to our inner masculine, coming out to protect us and showing these boundaries that we need to express in order for us to be safe in 3D reality in the timeline. So... Um, I've used my dragon energy to protect myself physically in many situations throughout my life where I needed to protect myself. Um, and that's not something I wish on anyone to have to be able to physically protect myself from even people who say that they love me, um, that are trying to hurt me in different ways. Uh, so I've, because of being under what I would call like my own fire, energetically from other people of wanting to push my boundaries I've had to really refine and speak up and use my dragon energy to say hey stop this is not okay like these are my boundaries stay away from me in different ways um and I I feel like nowadays I obviously am physically safe I've created a reality where 
I'm not feeling unsafe physically. I mean, recently when we got attacked, <laughs> uh, we like we got physically attacked here on Kopenhagen. Um, and that was like the first time where I was like, oh, fuck, I don't feel safe physically. And I had not used my dragon energy in that way in so long. Actually, I did. I just got really loud and was like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? You know, just to kind of be like, stop. Um, and that did shift the energy in the situation. Um, but I, I don't believe that most of us are in situations like the, all of you who I'm speaking to. I don't believe you're in situations where you need to use your dragon energy a lot of times in a physical way. I hope that you are in safe situations physically um, so that you can use your energy. But the, th the thing is that I have to speak to right now is that a lot of times today we are, we're in situations where we're physically safe but the physical mind part of our brain, when it gets triggered, it views emotional and psychological, like energetic um, attacks as the same as physical danger. And why is this? It's because when you're in a tribe, so say all of us come from tribes, like genetically and in our souls, we come from being in deep community. So this is, we are hardwired for connection. And so today when we are in environments where we feel that that possibility we could get cut off from connection, from our tribe, from our community, from our job, from our family, whatever it is, our physical mind takes that in the same way as a physical attack. It's like because from a, from a psychological perspective, if someone was cut off from the tribe, like for instance, way back in the day when we like were actually living in tribes, if someone like literally kicked you out of the tribe, it, it meant a death execution, a death sentence, because you weren't able to like take care of yourself out in the wilderness by yourself. Like we were meant to do it together and to protect each other. And you know, when you sleep at night, there's people who are watching out, making sure no one attacks you like an alien, an alien, an animal. I don't think aliens were attacking people. Uh, I mean like animals and other tribes. And so you were always in this protective bubble of your tribe. And so if you got cut off from that, then you're cut off from your resources, your connection, your safety. And this is still ingrained in our monkey mind today, in our physical mind. So when we feel this disconnection in some way, this can trigger us to use our dragon energy in a way that is protecting us. So we think we're, we need to use it to protect us. And I, I speak from a lot of experience because my core wound is like getting kicked out of, or I left my cult that I grew up in. And then everyone that was in my cult chose, all my family, all my friends, uh, except for maybe one or two, have chosen to disconnect from me because I'm not in the same religion. And so from a psychological and emotional perspective, I literally got kicked out of my tribe. And when I really go into it and like w go through the process of like how it was for me, a lot of people are like, how are you n normal? Like, how are you like a lot of people would probably have killed themselves in the same situation as me because I didn't understand how the outside world worked. Like I was very sheltered and also like systematically and like abused and brainwashed basically. Um, and so I had to. I thought I had to use my dragon energy a lot to protect myself because a lot of times, uh, you know, it's been 10 years since I left my cult, but there is many, many nights where I have dreams where I'm still in my religion and I'm like screaming. So this is a nightmare that I have. It's a repeating nightmare that I have where I'm screaming in my religion uh, and like literally no one is listening. And this is like really hard for me to deal with because I wake up in like a cold sweat and I'm just like, what the fuck? Um, because it feels, hold on one second, my camera is doing weird things. From a psychological and emotional standpoint, I literally felt like my throat chakra was blocked. Like for most of my childhood, I was like suppressed and brainwashed and literally shut down. Like I wasn't allowed to speak as a woman. And so when I got out of that, it was like, it was like my, a whole 24 years of 
not being able to speak up for myself and also feeling so trapped, like a, a trapped animal in a cage. That's how I felt emotionally and psychologically. And so if I get to a point where I'm close to that feeling, so it's an emotional feeling, it's not a physical thing, um, I will use my dragon energy as a protective mechanism for myself to get out of it. So it's not even that I'm like realizing I'm in this situation. When you get triggered, you do not realize that you are triggered. You just go, you let your physical mind take over because your physical mind is interpreting it as life-threatening. And you'll notice this because you might start talking really fast. You might have a hard time breathing. And it's like your body is going through this physical reaction to what it perceives as an outside threat. This is what happens when we get triggered. And everyone has different ways of handling it when they get triggered. Some people freeze. Some people fall. freeze. It's like literally you just shut down. You don't, you don't talk. You just kind of let whoever's talking at you or whatever situation's happening just to keep going. And you just kind of like freeze emotionally. Uh, some people fawn, which is like you just go along with it. You just keep saying yes, even when you're, you have no connection to your body anymore. It's like you're disconnected from your body and you just let your physical mind take over. And then there's some people like me who fight and I fight emotionally and psychologically. And this is my dragon energy coming out in a negative way. Because usually the person in front of me it's not about them. It's what is triggering me from everything in the past, like my trauma, my, my wounds that have happened that are being brought up in the situation. And these happen so that we have the opportunity to have a better solution. We get triggered on purpose. We get attracted to situations that trigger us so that we can heal this. So it is actually an opportunity to heal our trauma and heal and have a situation that is close enough to what reminds us of something that has caused trauma. It's close enough from an emotional standpoint. And then we have a, a, a resolution that is different, a different outcome that is positive than what happened in the past. So this is how you heal trauma. A lot of people, when they get triggered, they just do one of these responses. I said like fawn, fight, or, or flee. Oh, freeze. Okay, sorry. There's freeze. There's fawn, which is going along with it. There's fight. And then there's running away, fleeing, like literally running. And a lot of times um, people do this when they, you can disassociate, which means like you leave your body. So a lot of times people think this is freezing, but you're actually like just literally not there anymore. And I had to do this a lot as a kid, like when I was getting sexually molested or I was in situations where my dad was abusing me and I just couldn't, I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to leave. So I would disassociate and literally like astral project and like I could see myself up above, I was like up above my body in the situation and I was like just like not in my body anymore. So all of these are disconnections from our body. Disconnection from being present in the moment and fully being in the moment. And we're here in the timeline to create safety for ourselves so that we have the opportunity to be fully present, fully in the now. This is the goal is to experience everything in a way that feels really yummy in our bodies. So when we get triggered, it's an opportunity to heal something in the past that has happened where we had a negative outcome and we felt disconnected. A lot of times trauma happens when something bad happens and we feel disconnected and we're not able to, it's like our, our nervous system gets overwhelmed. And then we go do one of those things I just said, like freeze, fawn, fight or flight. And when our nervous system gets overwhelmed, it's like literally energy going through our body that just gets stuck somewhere. So this is why people start having physical manifestations of, of things that are stuck. Like it's literally like this is why people get breast cancer. Like a lot of cancer is, yes, it's what we're eating, all the chemicals and preservatives, but it's also so much trauma and energy getting stuck in our bodies. So how do we heal this? How do we use our dragon energy in a way that is constructive, productive, inspiring, actually uplifting? And the questions that I like to ask myself, like when I really started looking into this, because Faraday was the one who actually brought this up with me. He's the only one that could see, through, like both Faraday and I have our Plutos in Scorpio. 
Um, if you know what that means astrologically, that just means like we really can, like he also has dragon energy. He just is very careful about when he uses it. Um, <laughs> because for, yes. So basically like we can see through a situation and we both have to be really careful about how we speak this because if we don't do it with a lot of love. So this is the questions I ask myself. Am I coming from my heart right now? Am I using my energy and words to build up or to tear down? So you can speak your boundaries and say, like for instance, if Ferdy and I get in a fight, I can say, you know, this really hurts. I feel really shut down in my body. I don't feel good in my body. And then I get curious. I'm like, why do I feel shut down in my body? What is act what is overloading my nervous system? Like what happened right before I got triggered? Because that is the juicy part. Once you're triggered, it's game over. You have to go and be able to regulate your nervous system. You need to be able to calm down because when you're triggered for me, I go full dragon mode where I only see red. Like I don't even realize what I'm saying anymore. And my words are this Dracarius like fire coming out of me. And I will be, I'm not one to yell. I hate yelling. My dad yelled a lot growing up, but I can get very cold and like calculating with my words. And they're all accurate. Everything I'm saying is accurate, but it's not nice and it's not building up. So this is another thing I want to say about the feminine is, you know, we have been suppressed for so many generations and, and like also in this timeline, a lot of us have been suppressed in different ways and just literally our throat chakra like choked and not in a sexy kinky way. It's like in a, in like a, in like a, like you're screaming and nothing's coming out and no one can hear you kind of thing. And so when we finally activate this, this, masculine boundaries within us in a healthy way and this being able to speak up for our boundaries sometimes it comes out and it's like so much fire that it burns everything down around us and so this is what I was trying to say about the illustration with Daenerys like when she showed she showed her fire to this guy who she wanted him to f free the slaves but she did not burn him if she had had her dragon catch him on fire then there would be no more game to play. There would be no more negotiation. It would just be, okay, now I killed someone. Okay, now I have to like deal with whatever the re repercussions of this is. And I think this is kind of what a lot of you were asking me is like, yeah, I'm starting to use my dragon en energy. I'm starting to speak up for myself, but I'm noticing that I'm just causing more damage around me. And I don't want you to shut down this part of yourself that is actually speaking your boundaries and speaking up for yourself because that's really important to do. And it's really important for your connection with your body that your body knows that you can defend yourself. You don't need to have a man around you to defend yourself. I didn't realize that I was for many years dating like boxers and fighters, like people who literally have a fighting background because I felt safer with them because I hadn't yet developed like I was <laughs> kind of using them as my bodyguards like I loved them but there was a reason why I was really attracted to them because I felt safe around them and that's fine but what I also needed to do was build up my inner safety of like me being able to defend myself so if you're working on this yourself when you speak when you speak with your dragon energy and you're speaking like, hey, this is what I need, the best thing to do is make sure, one, that you're not triggered. If you are triggered, I will go into it in a minute, all the things to do to help you work through your trigger, but this is not the moment. So you can tell if you're triggered if you put your hand on your heart and you can breathe and it's natural and you're not racing in your head. If you're actually connected to your body and the energy is grounded and it's going through your heart space, then you're not triggered. If you feel like any of the things I just said, like the freeze, the fawn, the running away, the fighting, you are triggered. <sighs> so if you can breathe into your heart space, then you can use this dragon energy to speak what your needs are. Because this is really what it is trying to do is to protect you and to speak up for you. So speak what your needs are about the situation. If you have any requests that you would like to make about the situation in order to feel safer, you can speak this. So and the important thing is, this doesn't feel safe in my body. What would feel safe in my body? 
And remember, we have self-responsibility. So uh, even in the relationship with Faraday in the beginning, I was like, I was really like putting it on him that he needed to create all the safety for me. And yes, there was situations where he wasn't emotionally attuned to like how he was using his dragon energy. And like, you know, like he wasn't saying very nice things to me uh, sometimes when he got triggered. But there were a lot of times and he worked on that and, you know, he's also growing and like it's all getting better and better. And also there was a lot of times where I was just like very, very sensitive and was wanting him to kind of create all of the safety for me. But I didn't realize that I needed to create the safety for myself and my body first. And then he can add to that and amplify that. Right. But if I'm walking around just completely not feeling safe in my body, in my life, then it doesn't really matter who I'm interacting with because I'm just going to be constantly triggered. There's always going to be situations that are coming up that are making me feel like I need to use this dragon energy. And I will tell you that this was a big part of my early twenties after I left my religion. I, I just, and it, it's, I feel like it's pretty valid. Like I actually had a lot of trauma. I had a lot of people that didn't have my best interests at heart that were actually trying to brainwash me, abuse me, use me in different ways for their gain. And so I was kind of, yeah, like this caged animal that had just got out of the cage and was just still like shaking and trying to build my life and trying to figure out what existence was and still feeling very unsafe. Um, and for me, what really helped me to work through that safety was a lot of therapy, a lot of group therapy, one-on-one -on -one therapy, women's circles, and also a lot of psychedelics used in a way that was very grounded. I had, um, I personally have taken a lot of psychedelics by myself because for a long time I didn't feel that anyone could really hold space for how much trauma that I have had. And I, looking back, I think some of that was accurate um, and also I feel like if I'd held space that there was someone that could like in the vortex, you know, that someone could hold me, then they would have showed up, you know? So I recommend that you hold space in your reality, that there are people that can hold space for you and then they will show up. Um, I think it's really important to say that when you use this dragon energy and you speak your boundaries and your requests and your needs, you have to do it without any expectation of how the other person is going to react. So if you're basing your happiness and your safety on whether, and this is all like baseline that you're physically safe. And like I'm, I'm talking about in relationships where someone is not abusing you. If someone is actually actively like out to get you and abusing you, please just leave the situation. Don't work through this with them. Get your, yourself to a place where you're actually safe emotionally, physically, psychologically. I'm talking about in situations where people actually do have your best interests at heart, but we're all figuring out our traumas and we're working through stuff together. Um, it's important to release expectation of like, you know, your reality is based. So for instance, my reality is not based on whether Faraday fixes himself in whatever way I deem he needs to, right? That's, that's in my head. That story is in my head. I need to say, this is what I need for myself. Um, you know, and I'm not expecting you to do anything, but if you want to keep playing together in this game of relating, this is what I need. And, and I would love to work together on this and like come to a, 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 a resolution where we both can speak and feel heard and, and we both can honor what feels good in our body and safety. So you're kind of like speaking what you need to feel safe. They speak what they need to feel safe. And then you like work it out together as a team. And I feel like what ha has happened traditionally in the last thousands of years is like men set the tone of what's going to happen in the relationship or the situation. A lot of times this is because they're used to being in the leadership role, but it's also because women are used to just going along with everything. So women, you also need to speak up. You need to separate from the masculine energy in your life, like the people who are in your life physically tune into your own body and figure out what you need outside of what they need because we're also programmed as women to always take what they need like with the men around us and put their needs first before our own and we're not going to do that anymore now we need to speak up for ourselves first they need to speak up for themselves first and then we co-create it together this is this is uh energetic equal partnership this is king queen dynamic 
And I think I also need to speak to the fact that like our reality, our beliefs of our reality create our external reality. Um, if you are very new to metaphysics and some of the things that I'm talking about, about the structure of reality, I recommend that you reach out to me and ask to have me send you a free copy of this book that I love so much called The New Metaphysics. And the first two chapters are kind of hard to get through, uh, but if they are for you, you can just skip to the third chapter. I think it starts with religion, but it's basically the whole structure of reality and how much this comes from our belief system. So when our soul chose to come down in the timeline, it gave us situations for us to work through, but then there is this baseline um, principles of how reality work. And a lot of us are so like stuck in our trauma of like, basically when you're in spirit, you remember everything, you understand everything, everything makes sense. And then you choose, you choose which family you're going to be born into, which time you're going to be born into in the timeline and, and what obstacles or challenges, opportunities for growth you're going to go through because your soul wants to grow in this specific area. So you are completely in charge of your experience and your reality. When we are born, we forget all of this. We go through the mass consciousness amnesia that is slowly being lifted right now. And along the way, we are learning these things. And that's the thing is, it's how much are you going to learn before you wake up to the structure of reality? Because this is kind of the juicy part is like, what are you learning along the way? Who are you choosing to be when you don't know that you're in control of everything? Um, and then when you realize that you are, you create your reality, I feel like for me, this is like the extra juicy part because this is where I'm at and things just synchronicity starts happening super quickly. And something that I shifted because my soul had me be born into a reality that was very unsafe for my body, mind and soul. I really chose I remember when I left my religion and I was like, I choose that there is something better for me out there, that there is a community of people that understand me and love me for exactly who I am, that I can, I choose to be feeling safe in my body, feeling at home in my body, feeling joyful in my body. This is my baseline emotion. It does not matter what's going on externally around me. This is who I choose to be. And so before I understood the structure of reality intellectually, I chose that this was going to be my reality, that I was going to have this magical life where I traveled all over the world, met up with the most amazing, safe people, had the best experiences with men, women, building my tribe and my community and having the most fun along the way. And I've spent the last 10 years traveling to over 60 countries, building community all, all along the way, having the most magical experiences with men and women romantically, uh, and of course having some challenges along the way, but I would say that my my baseline reality that I was I kept coming back to, and it was really, really hard for me to shift this. I'm not going to say it was easy, but my baseline reality that I have settled into is I am safe. Everything is always working out for me. Even today, in this moment, right before the podcast, uh, when you buy a scooter here on Copanon, you get what they call a green book, which is like your license, like saying you own the book. I can't find my green book for my bike, like for some, like in all our moves and going to Europe and coming back. It's just not here. I can't find it. But what I'm telling myself is this is all working out for me. I have my green book in my hand. I know I, I own it. I know I own my bike everything's okay. And then I just sink into that knowingness. And then synchronistically, I start getting images in my head of like, oh, maybe I left it at my friend's house when I went to Europe, and I left a bunch of stuff with her. So I messaged her and I was like, how is this all working out for me? You know? And so for right now, I always look for like, what's the positive side of the situation. And at least right now it's like, I'm connecting to a friend that I really love. And I'm like checking Oh, so how are you doing? What's going on? So my baseline reality is that everything is always working out for me and it's perfect and it's always going to lead to more connection, more abundance and yeah, it's, and feeling really juicy in my body. Like I am protected by the universe. The universe has my back, my guides, my higher self, whatever you believe is guiding you and protecting you. 
there is something bigger than us out there. Yes, I really believe this. It's taken me many years um, growing up in a religion that used um, our connection to God and source as this way to shame and guilt and control. I, for many years, I put um, spirituality in a box in connection to religion. I didn't want anything to do with it because I thought it equaled me having to not be my authentic self and having to suppress myself. And then I realized, oh, wait, my connection to source and my spirituality, like we are spiritual creatures having this very temporary physical experience. Like we are eternal souls in the timeline. And when I realized this, I was like, oh my God, we're so fucking powerful. Like, this is amazing. And it has nothing to do with what religion talks about, at least the one I grew up in, about you need to, you know, be shame, shamed and guilted into, and controlled into doing whatever, whatever. <sighs> a book that really helped me with that is Conversations with God. I also have a free copy of that. If you want to message me, I can send you a digital copy. I read that every morning right now, and it's really helping me. Um, so when you get triggered, so I want to go into what happens when you get triggered. Um, your like I was saying, your physical mind senses actual life danger, even if it's emotional and psychological danger that you're going through and your physical mind takes over and does what it needs to protect yourself. So this is when the dragon energy can be used in a way that is maybe a little extra, like it's like going too far. It's like burning everything around it. Um, so what, what should we do when we actually are triggered? I, I find it best to not talk to the person who's triggering us. Like basically don't try and work it out in that moment with the person in front of you, unless you guys have built up and you like Faraday and I are getting to the point where we can we can host each other through our triggers. Um, but for, for a long while, it was like when, when we would get triggered by each other, we just needed space. And we have couples counseling uh, and amazing elders in our community. And they were like, yeah, just take five minutes. Just go for a walk. Get out of each other's energy field. Get in your own energy field. Don't talk about it with each other. It's not going to help. Um, and just take some healthy space. Like sometimes, like for me with my abandonment stuff, like I thought taking space was like a negative thing. It meant, I thought it meant that the person didn't love me. And now I recognize that a lot of times it's very healthy for them to get out of my energy because I'm the one who might be burning things down. So what helps me is to move, sorry, I'm, I'm just moving my seat again. Uh, what helps me is to move my energy through the body in some way. So walking, swimming, dancing, like literally emotions are just energy that is going through the body. Um, and also to speak it out loud. So I, I have girlfriends that, you know, we have, we, we, <laughs> we do these things with each other where we're like, uh, I'm going to send you a voice message, but only listen to this if you're resourced and you don't even have to listen to it at all, but I just need to speak it out loud to someone. And I will speak a, like a voice memo uh, to my girlfriend about everything that's going on and why I'm triggered. And usually just speaking it out loud is so helpful. And then, then I tune into her energy and like what I would think she would say back. And then sometimes I even, after I send it, I listen to my own voice of what happened. And this just helps me to feel really validated if you don't have any friends that you feel like you can do this with, you can also send a voice memo to yourself, like just on your phone, like up the voice recorder. I've, um, in the past, I really used journaling a lot, and I think journaling is great. I also have found recently that using, actually using your throat chakra, like speaking and hearing yourself out loud is really, really, really helpful. So if you love to journal, I think that's amazing. But you can even go into nature somewhere and speak your truth out loud because the only person that really needs to hear your truth, the only person that really matters in your reality because you are the main character of your own reality, the only person that really matters hearing your truth is you. Like, just full stop. Like, you are the only one who matters about that. Of course, it's important if you're in relation to someone else and you want to feel understood and heard in the dynamic that's also really important that you can get to a, some sort of shared reality with 
the person that you are you are in connection with. But first and foremost, the most important person is you and your connection to source, your connection to your higher self. A lot of us use our connections to other people to validate our own experience. This is not healthy. This causes codependency. You can look this up. There's an amazing book called Codependent No More. I read that book many years ago and it really helped me because this is when you are hooked too much emotionally to someone else and you're using them to regulate your nervous system. It is our self-responsibility to regulate our own nervous system. That means that when we are triggered and we are our nervous system is activated in these ways that I was saying, then it is our responsibility to be able to self-regulate. So we are it's our responsibility to be able to calm ourselves down. We do not have to do this all the time. I'm just saying that we shouldn't have the reliability of our nervous system based on someone else. So like for instance, with you and your partner, if every single time you are upset, you're relying on your partner to calm you down, that is codependency. That is depending on them for your emotional safety, which is, I will just tell you, leads to so much fucked upness because then we start trying to manipulate the situation because what's going on with their partner equals our emotional safety and we're not these sovereign individual unique souls in the timeline anymore we're just like are energetically wrapped up too much in each other so again i believe that we are as humans hardwired for connection and i think it's really important to co-regulate so that means when you you don't self-regulation is you calm you can calm your own nervous system co-regulation is i cannot calm my nervous system right now i'm too activated I'm going to reach out to a friend and ask for, ask, this is very important, ask for co-regulation. So in today's world, a lot of times people go and they just dump on each other. And I don't think that that is healthy. I always ask my friends, do you have space to host me right now and some emotions that I'm going through? And if they say no, I say, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I honor that. I have, you know, three or four more people that I feel comfortable in this specific situation to ask so you shouldn't always put it on one friend or one partner no one like we are meant to co-regulate in tribe in community with multiple people it is not meant to just be one person that's too much pressure to put on one person um so Something that helps me when I'm going through the motions of like working through my trigger is I ask myself, what is the story that's going through my head? So we all have these stories of what we believe is happening in the situation. And when we're triggered, the story is usually this person is hurting me. I need to protect myself. But it's important to honor the story in order to work through it. So I usually say, what's the story? Okay, what emotions is this bringing up for me? I'm feeling triggered. I'm feeling frustrated. I'm feeling sad. It hurts me, whatever honor all of those, speak them. And then what is actually happening in the situation? So this is using dragon energy for a positive, like getting down to what is the actual truth here? So I'm able to look unbiased on both sides of me and what's happening in the situation or the person. Like, yes, this is my reality, but this is also another reality. And what is the actual truth that it's usually something in the middle. It's usually like, oh, I'm sorry, my phone is doing weird things. It's usually something in the middle, uh, in between those, your reality and the other person's. Um, and some last things I want to say about dragon energy is like, as the feminine wakes up to our own power and how, how powerful we really are, I think it's really important to say that our words are spells. Our words create our reality. So I invite you today to speak whatever you want in the positive. So even if you're you're saying like to yourself or to someone else, whatever you want to happen in the situation or how you want to be more empowered, speak it in the positive. Don't say things like, I don't want him to do this thing or I don't like it when this... Ha-. You can say that, but always try and also say it in the positive. And I've gotten to the point where I try and say everything in the positive because whatever we say gets attracted to us and brings that into our reality. So for instance, 
like if I'm feeling triggered by something with Faraday, I can say, this makes me feel unsafe in my body. What I would love is to feel more safe in my body, feel like I can share my emotions, feel like I can, you know, have whatever, whatever, whatever. So it's important that instead of saying what I don't want, then this is programming that a lot of us have is to speak what we don't want. And, um, and I invite you to do this throughout the, your day of everything, even when you're not triggered, um, just speak, what, what would you love more of instead? And don't say I want, because I want is separating you from that experience. So you can say, I have abundance. I, I would love more abundance, you know, this thing and that thing I would love, like be in this energy of gratitude because everything is already existing around you. And your words are literally a magic spell that is saying, yes, I want this thing. I, I have this thing, not I want this thing. I just caught myself. Because when you when you are in the state of wanting, that is separating you, it's going to keep validating the state of, yes, I want this, but I don't have it. So if you put yourself in the vibration of, I already have this, I would love more of it in my life, then this is the state of gratitude, knowing that it's already there for you and it's, everything is available for you that you want, or that you desire. Want is such a funny word. Um, so, and again, what I was wanting to say about the feminine is as we start speaking our truth more, there is a lot of built up fire in us of maybe past times when we weren't able to speak our truth, didn't feel safe to speak our truth. And so if you're in a situation where your dragon energy is coming out, I really invite you to not point it at people that actually love you. <laughs> Cause I've done this with Ferdy and he's like, what you're saying is accurate, but the energy behind it is so hurtful. Like, why, why are you doing this? And he's actually a nice guy that loves me very much and wants to keep c continuing to co-create a reality together. But for me, I was using, I was like all of the times before when I didn't feel safe with the masculine and didn't feel safe in the situation and it was just like coming out. So I invite you to find ways that you can channel this dragon energy so that it doesn't come out on people that you love. So for me, the way I did that was I did Brazilian jiu-jitsu for three years, three or four years. I trained three times a week. <laughs> Uh, little known fact about me. Um, and when I would have this, these times where I would feel this dragon energy, they would joke in, in the gym that I trained at, oh, it's red Britney. It's like literally I'm seeing red and I'm just letting it out. But for me, that was a very safe situation in brotherhood. It was like me and like a bunch of huge Brazilian black belt men that just really viewed me as their little sister. And it was such a safe place for me to let out a lot of this dragon energy in a way that wasn't hurting anyone. Um, so I invite you to find whatever permission slips those are for you. We all need them. Do not suppress it. It's, not, it's only going to make it worse. And then use your feminine energy in a balanced way with your masculine energy where you are speaking your boundaries. And your feminine energy is backing it up where it's like, ah, oh, yes, I, I would love to have more of this in my life. This is, this doesn't feel good in my body right now, but this is what I would actually love. And I really appreciate how much you show up for me. So for instance, Faraday, I have realized recently that I need to, I choose to give him more vocal appreciation because he really does show up in so many ways, even when he has no clue what's going on and he's doing his best to figure it out. He just keeps showing up with so much genuine love and, and like commitment. And that is something that I honor so much. And I have not seen that much in the masculine in my life. There are people who just keep going and keep trying to figure it out and keep trying to create a shared reality that feels good for both of us. And I realized that, yes, I can speak my truth and speak what I need in order to feel safe in my body. And also I can use my feminine energy to really create this yummy environment for both of us where I can just uh, really appreciate so much everything he does for me and for us and for our babies, Afro and Shadu. And, and just like that is the power of the feminine is to empower 
the masculine around us, that they are doing a good job, that they are doing their best and that we really appreciate and we love them and like telling them to keep going because this is what the masculine needs. A lot of times men today don't know if they're doing a good job, they don't know what their place are place is in the timeline and they need this re this like affirmations from the feminine like yes I would like more of this in my life I would love more of this in my life and also thank you so much you're doing amazing I really appreciate everything and like you have to really say all of it from your heart it doesn't work if you're not being genuine and authentic about it but what I mean is like when you're in the state of gratitude for the masculine and for all of the beautiful things that are in your life they will keep coming more and more abundantly so I find it to be really important that we that we use our words to build up and not to tear down. We've had so much of this, like the masculine that is in the male body has used this for war. And now the feminine, like the masculine that's in the feminine bodies is using this a lot right now to tear down the masculine because they have so many thousands of years of suppression and I honor it. I have felt it in my own body. Just, just this like, what the actual fuck? This is not okay in so many ways. And at the same time, if we are going to be these high priestess, these magicians in our timeline, we can go and spend a whole nother timeline being upset. And I'm not saying we shouldn't honor everything that has happened and honor. I've spent so many years honoring and letting the emotions go through my body. And at the same time, I'm at the stage where I'm like, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life being upset. I am not a victim. I am the main character of my reality. And it's a fucking amazing reality. I love my timeline. I'm so grateful. I have the most magical timeline where I live on a tropical paradise island with my dog and my cat and the most amazing boyfriend ever. And we have a community that we're building, like a new earth community. And we do play parties every two weeks and we host Tantra immersions. And I have an OnlyFans. Like I make money making love with people that I love and creating experiences for people to empower themselves in their sexuality and to drop into their bodies and feel safe and to connect and to be the mama of the tribe. And I'm just like, I literally have changed my reality. Like when I think of how I was born, that reality and who I am now I'm not joking when I say it feels like a completely different timeline. It feels like a completely different life. Like that Brittany was like seven different lives ago. And when you are able to really look at your truth and to face your traumas and to, and to work through your triggers in a grounded way where you're, you're balanced in your masculine and your feminine, you can skip timelines. You can quantum leap through portals of different realities and create whatever reality and whatever magic you are excited to create in your life. So oh, I just want to take a deep breath on that one. Um, I really, really empower you to create the life that you have always dreamed of and to dream bigger and to know that it is your reality that you deserve like whatever you choose is your reality so go around and say to yourself i choose this reality i choose that i i choose to live here i choose to follow my joy i choose to have people in my life that love me for my authentic self and that i feel safe to drop into my body and to be my inner child around them and i choose to be the most empowered version of myself and I love myself and I know that I'm always guided and protected and I know that everything is working out best case scenario. Everything benefits me. I choose to respond positively to every situation. Like for me, I choose to respond positively to the situation that I can't find my green book for my bike and it's okay. It is going to work out in a way that is positive, even if it's a funny story of Brittany loses things a lot <laughs> when I'm very in my feminine around Faraday and I'm just like, he'll take care of it, you know? So it also could be a positive situation where I'm like, I need to keep track of my shit more <laughs> and not rely on Faraday to keep track of everything for me. 
Um, so everything is benefiting us if we allow it, you know? Whew. So I'm going to leave you with that and just keep remembering that we choose our reality. Your words are spells. Use your energy to build up, not to tear down. Use your dragon energy in a way that is protecting you in a way where you are grounded. You are not triggered when you're using your dragon energy and you're coming from your heart. You can even put your hands on your heart and really speak your truth. You can close your eyes, put your hand on your heart and speak what is the truth for you. (sighs) And everything is working out for you. Everything is happening for you. Everything is positive if you choose that reality and step into that reality. Because I was in a reality in the past where everything was not working out for me and people were actively trying to fuck up my my reality. And I chose, I knew something was better out there and I chose a reality where things got better. And I chose a reality where everything was working out for me, best case scenario. And here we are. We have arrived. (laughs) Ah, We have arrived. Okay, I'm sending you guys lots of love and I hope you have an amazing day and I'm going to keep making more and more podcasts. So send me questions uh, and I will add them to my podcast list and also know that I do human design readings here on the island. Um, I also do online coaching over te- over WhatsApp um, and I have an OnlyFans if you want to subscribe to that. Uh, Faraday and I have a course Um If you want to jump on that, that's amazing. That's on our vegansavage.com website. We do play parties right now every two weeks. Um, We are going to host more and more Tantra immersions, which is not sexual. It's just caring touch. Because I really believe that we need more safe spaces to drop into our bodies and to connect to each other. Um, And we are here building the new earth. We are... The new earth is a vibration. It is... Yes... It can be happening in physical, it is going to happen in physical reality, but it's going to start vibrationally. It's going to be in the feeling that you feel when you hear my podcast, in the feeling that you feel when you come into a space that I'm hosting. That is the new earth. And then the more of us that get on this vibration and we create things from this vibration of everything is working out, best case scenario, the universe has my back, I'm here to create beautiful things in the world, to build things that connect us and are good for for the earth, we are nature's voice. When we are symbiotic in all of these ways and we are using our energy and our words and our actions in a way that is building up and connecting to each other and connecting us to nature and connecting us to ourselves and our connection to source, this is the new earth vibration. So a lot of you are out there and you are alone where you are. Like I get a lot of you messaging me saying, I'm the only one in my area that is waking up spiritually and I feel very alone. What I want to tell you is you are not the only one in your area. You just might be realizing <clears throat> if you choose to speak up about your spiritual things, and the things that are interesting for you, you will find people that are attracted to you. So you have to be brave. You have to use your throat chakra to speak up and share what is going on for you. Share about it on your Instagram. Share about it on your Facebook. (coughs) Start reaching out, looking for conscious communities, looking for meditation stuff, aesthetic dance. You will find it. And if you don't find it, I invite you to create it. I just met a, a woman who came to the island and she lives in Rotterdam, which is uh, one hour from Amsterdam, and they didn't have uh, any spiritual community where she lives. It's very, very in the matrix and very in their heads, not in their bodies, right? And so she got together with five of her friends and they just did a dinner once a month where they shared, the dinner was everyone cooked from home, they brought their food over, and then they just shared about spiritual things, whatever was growing, uh, brewing in them spiritually, whatever they were growing in, anything they, and then they started sharing their spiritual gifts like meditation and dance and anything that was connecting to them to their bodies, connecting to source, connecting to each other. That has grown in Rotterdam to once a month, uh, over a hundred people get together. They have to like rent a, like a, 
an event hall in order to host everyone. Everyone still makes their own dinners. They still all home cook food and they come together. And the only guideline is talk about spiritual things. Talk about anything related to spirituality that is sparking you right now. And she's saying that they have so many more people on the waiting list that want to join. It's like, it's like lighting up like fire, right? It's like this, like, I, I'm getting goosebumps when I think about it because this is what's happening in the world. Like people are waking up and it's going through the collective consciousness like a wildfire. And there's going to be those of us who are activated enough and grounded enough in order to hold space, not just for ourselves, but for other people who are waking up. That is what Faraday and I are doing when we make these podcasts. We are holding space and sharing our vibration with you and telling you, you are not alone. You are not crazy. You are just waking up spiritually and you are looking for your soul tribe. And we are here. We are these beacons of light saying we are here. And I invite you to be one of the first ones in your area, in your community that is also choosing to be the speaking of light, choosing to be brave and say, hey, let's get together and talk about spiritual things. Let's talk about us waking up in the reality, the structure of reality, how it's feeling in our bodies, how we're processing trauma in our bodies. All of this is connecting us to source, connecting us to each other, connecting us to nature. Okay, Afro wants to come in and that's me telling you, she's telling you that she wants to go for a walk. So I'm going to go and I love you guys. Have a beautiful day.